TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment. Oh, we are live. I'm tweaking. We're live. So you can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. And I'm honestly trying to stay on here as long as I can. We'll see how that goes. Uh, don't forget, we do got the Patreon. Oh, wait. This is my warning. This is my viewer discretion. Peep it, YouTube. Thank you. Uh, this is what we got over on Patreon. Check it out. Come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Don't forget, we do got the Discord. After these YouTube reactions, we're going to get into the Discord, man. We're going to record what we don't record and see how that goes. Uh, so y'all can join us. I'm trying to stay on Discord, on, on live for as long. I want today to be my longest stream I've ever done. It's only 1.47 p.m. We've been on here since... How long we've been on here, chat? We've been on here one hour and 52 minutes. It's the longest we've ever been on, I think. This is Inside Scotland's Gangs by The Mix. The Mix channel? That's what it's called? I don't know. I've reacted to this before, the can of hands. Uh, so I'm going to re-upload that one along with this one so y'all be like, man, you need to react to it. No, I get it already. Let's get into it. Since the spotlight was on the since the spotlight was on the Kinahan cartel, attention has also shifted to organised crime in Scotland. And it's widely known that this cartel is in partnership with Scotland's Lions Gang. Excuse me. Go back. And it's widely known that this cartel is in partnership with Scotland's Lions Gang, making vast profits from killing Scots. The Lions Gang has been feuding with the Daniels clan for two decades turning Glasgow into a war zone. The same city where there are also the most drug-related deaths in Europe. And the Scottish criminal landscape could be further destabilized. Don't forget, y'all be Glasgow send-offing people. Don't, don't think I forgot. It's been a while. But that I will never forget that. When I watched that on um, Rose Kemp and they said Glasgow send-off and y'all told me what that was. Unbelievable. When the Irish cartel stops supplying quality drugs to Lions Group. It's hot. And surprisingly, there is such a connection between the two countries that some would go so far as to describe the Kinahans as an Irish-Scottish mafia. Mm. When you look at the three big cartel companies sanctioned by the US, Duckershoe had ties to Sandra V the same businesswoman who for a while owned MTK Global, yeah, the I boxing management this. company that was partially sold by Daniel yeah, Kinahan. Kinahan. It turns yeah. out that those ties were even stronger when Sandra's ex-partner, a Scottish drug dealer named Kevin Kelly, ran in the past a Marbella-based construction company with the Kinahans. This even resulted in a kidnapping that was eventually foiled by Spanish law enforcement. On the other hand, the second company is Nero Drinks, based in Glasgow. The three companies, the U.S. Treasury... Did they make Iron Brew? ...he has sanctioned today are Nero Drinks Company Limited, is owned and controlled by John Morrissey, whose wife is a company's primary stockholder. He is John Morrissey, a veteran of organized crime, allegedly one of the most important members of the Kinahan clan. He appeared on social networks, enjoying a party life, showing his outgoing character, which would be contrasted with his major role as a murderer linked to the 38 murders. Before the United States named him as a pillar Demon. of the gang, he lived openly in Marbella. John Francis Morisse is based in Spain. He's involved in money laundering and has served as the organization's enforcer and facilitator of illicit drug shipments from South America. Now his luxurious villa has remained quite empty, as a visit by the Sunday World Media team attests. As for his Nero Vodka, based in Scotland, Morrissey was the product ambassador 
while he directly or indirectly controlled the company through the majority shareholder, his wife Nicole, used as a front person for his own interests. However, there is no evidence to suggest that his wife is under investigation. One Kinnahan gang member to be sanctioned is John Morrissey, along with Glasgow-based vodka company Nero Drinks. But the Kinnahans are not interested in flogging vodka. Their real business is cocaine and heroin. Mm. In addition, Daniel... <laughs> Put it straight up like that, huh? Parliament members know what's up. Okay. Daniel Kinahan would have received a significant portion of this business to compensate for the seized drug shipments. Morrissey gave a significant... Didn't they all flee to Spain because of the extradition laws, right? See, y'all be thinking I don't be paying attention, but Never look, portion. this is a year later and I still got that information in my head. Leave me alone when I'm on my phone. I'm writing notes down. I'm writing notes in my phone when I touch my phone. Say something to that. Of this business to Daniel Kinahan to compensate for illicit drug shipments. Over the years, it became clear that the cartel had deep roots in the whole Scottish society, which serves to absorb dirty money from crime. This crime is mainly dominated by two clans responsible for at least 70 territory war crimes in recent years. Both teams are composed of at least 300 members and are at the center of a feud in Glasgow for control of the country's drug trade. All right, look, so now that all this going down in Scotland, huh? Enough people were talking about the $6,000 education grant. Yo, no more, don't nobody care. You need to spend six on your. Never mind. It began in the summer. Tried. It began in the summer of 2001 when a large stash of cocaine belonging to the Daniels was stolen from a house in Milton, which was then sold to the Lions. They didn't that? like the fact that the Daniels were starting to move into their own stronghold in Milton, so the situation was bound to get out of hand. From that moment on, it was literally a fight to the death, with several episodes marking the history. For example, in December 2006, a scene worthy of a gangster movie takes place. Two hitmen from Daniel's team, dressed in long black coats, arrived with handguns in front of a garage owned by the brother of the head of the Lions clan at the time. The action lasted only a few minutes, and when the smoke cleared, we- I'ma let y'all know, a few minutes in a gunfight, it feels like an eternity, allegedly. Could count three victims on the ground, one dead and two wounded. One of them was Stephen Lyons, today leader this. of the group. Then it will be the turn of a key actor of the Daniels team to be murdered. It was Kevin Carroll, nicknamed Gerbil. He had a long history with the Lyons that goes back to his school years, when he was bullied by them, which led him to form a friendship with Daniels, eventually even being described as public enemy number one. If there's any young kids watching this man, stay away from bullying is not the way to like you see what bullying does. Bullying turned the gerbil into the biggest op. You feel me? Don't do that. Don't bully. Start a Twitch. Go live. Pick up a camera and record yourself and put it on YouTube. Be YouTubers. One. His end was also very public. He was sitting in a car parked in a supermarket parking lot when suddenly masked killers arrived, shooting at the back seat where Gerbil was sitting. The latter and killers arrived. What type of camera is this? This elite as hell. Shooting at the back seat where Gerbil was sitting. The latter, unable to escape with the locked doors of a three-door Audi, he died at the scene. No doubt he had been trapped. Back door. In any case, this period was a catalyst for the Lions team. After surviving the 2006 shooting, Stephen fled to Spain, where he allegedly made a connection to the Irish cartel. 
this would reinvigorate the lions with a hand in their turf war, while giving the Kinahans access to a lucrative drug distribution network in Scotland. The lions would grow from strength to strength, with the eventual reversal of situation in 2016, when Jamie, the head of the Daniel family, died of cancer. Thus, the balance of power would have changed since that moment in favor of the lions. This would be further accentuated by an explosive increase in violence that occurred in 2017. The first target was Robert Daniel, who was chased by the lions team before being assaulted in his home. The suspect's car was later burned. Then it was the turn of an individual linked to the lions to take two bullets. Indeed, Monaghan was taking his daughter to elementary See, this is why it's important that I watched that other one before, because I remember dude. ...school when a hitman dressed as a woman shot him. The latter miraculously escaped this assassination attempt with two bullets in his body. In addition, Monaghan was already accused of Gerbil's murder in 2010, but the case collapsed due to lack of evidence. After this incident, a wave of attacks seen as a coordinated vendetta against members connected to the Daniels ensued. With Behind me, that's Gary Petty and a nice little bubble Montclair coat. Finally, the most savage crime committed on the current leader, Stephen Bozo Daniel. His Skoda Octavia was first pursued in a high-speed chase that began north of Glasgow and ended with a crash on a freeway exit. It was there that Lyons members slaughtered him with various bladed weapons that nearly severed his nose from his face and detached his upper jaw from his skull. First responders even thought he had been shot in the head. Can you say that one more time? Because I'm not going to say it. That nearly severed his nose from his face and detached his upper jaw from his skull. This is my lower jaw right here. Oh, <laughs> you did. First responders even thought he had been shot in the head. It turns out that his car had been secretly equipped with a GPS tracker Dang. that helped locate him. In any case, he survived the massacre. This isn't. He survived? With the omerta that reigns in the streets, mm. of, he survived the massacre. Before and after. And with the omerta that reigns in the streets of Glasgow, okay. he had confirmed in front of the judge that he did not know any of his family's enemies. In total, six men were imprisoned for a total of 104 years for all these attacks against the Daniels clan. You sought to turn Glasgow into a war zone for your feud. This is a civilized country which is based on the rule of law. There is no place for this type of conduct, retribution, or the law of the jungle. What? You guys see this amazing track? It's hearsay. Is that the police had issued... ...or the law of the jungle. What is interesting is that the police had issued over 1,000 life-threatening warnings over a five-year period. <laughs> Scottish cops have issued more than one. Oh, they do that. They do that out there? I don't know if they do that out here, but that's nice of them. 1,000 threats to life warnings. So they go to door to door and issue warnings like, hey, be careful. <laughs> We've got some information that your life has been, you know, threatened. That's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know they did that. Or did I know that? Okay. 59 of which were known as Osman warnings, aimed at people with the highest level of risk. Bozo was among them. And potentially Stephen Lyons, who had already had a £200,000 contract placed on his head by the rival team before leaving the country. 
law enforcement finally began a crackdown called Operation Engagement against these two clans over five years ago. However, the feud... Operation Engagement, is that like, uh, what Young Thug and YSL got? What they got going on? What's that called, that charge? RICO. Is that like a RICO charge? Or do y'all call it, in, in the UK, do they call a RICO charge a RICO charge? Or do they call it what they just called it? ...against these two clans over five years ago. However, the feud continued with new deaths, fires, or even with a retired mother related to the Daniels who was smashed in the head with a weapon. And even with numerous convictions, the problem has just moved inside the prisons where the feud also continues. More than 700 people have been arrested in Britain and tens of millions of pounds have been seized after the police infiltrated a top secret communication system used by criminal gangs. It's been called the biggest and most significant law enforcement operation ever carried out in the UK. On the other hand, it was the cracking of EncroChat's servers that allowed the dismantling of criminal networks such as the case of Big Popper, strongly linked to the notorious Lions Gang, but also to the Kinahan Cartel of Dublin. The way he ran his operation in Scotland impressed even the highest ranks of these groups. And it's not just Popper who is linked to these two groups. Indeed, Scottish connections to the cartel were also established through Robert Kelby, who had been instrumental. I'm not gonna lie, a lot of these dudes look like, you know what I'm saying? Like they got the highest, highest credit score you can get. Uh, they went to all seven years of uni. You know what I'm saying? And that's how they stay, go under the radar looking like that. The whole time. In launching a gym in the Canary Islands linked to the Kinahans. Wouldn't the Furies And Kelby it? even described himself as MTK's talent manager. Right, here we are. The boys are having a good time here in Scotland. 2020. 2020, we're on it. Robert, what are you saying, Mush? Who hasn't been shy about showing up with big players like Tyson Fury. Yeah, I see. This is not surprising, given that boxing has always been associated with criminality. As for Kelby, he found himself in a bitter feud with his rival, Mark Richardson. Indeed, Kelby was a childhood friend of a Celtics player who was attacked outside a nightclub in 2009. Richardson was charged with vicious assault against the player, but those charges were later dropped. However, Kelby, a former boxer, hunted down Richardson and beat him up. The next year, in 2010, Kelby survived being shot in the back. Since then, the feud has continued with various incidents, including several shots fired at Kelby and his mother's house, which caused the gangster to anger his neighbors by building a wall with electric doors around his property. He went the Drake route. Instead of, instead of uh, trees, he put an electric fence. As for Richardson, his brother Dale was targeted in 2021 in front of the Tesco store, and it would have been done without a doubt to get at his brother Mark. But it could have been just another episode in the war between Lyons and Daniels, given that Mark is a long-time associate of Stephen Bozo. Indeed, Mark is part of a criminal organization considered as the most sophisticated in the eyes of Scottish detectives. It all begins in January 2017, when special officers conduct an undercover operation monitoring various properties and cars linked to the gang. While observing a Toyota Yaris, they suddenly notice Richardson around. The officers then chase him until he is tackled to the ground. It was a chance in that wasn't a long chase. <laughs> counter that changed everything as he was in possession of the keys to the Toyota. Mm. It turned out that the fob did not appear to activate any alarm on the car, but was needed to release a compartment in the trunk that concealed a weapon. This discovery G-Lock baby! Um 
Allegedly. I don't know what that was. Honestly. It sat off a chain of similar events based on the same principle. Oh, they, they got... Similar events based on the same... Let me get out of way. They got Uzis, techs, attachments. They got some big too. A couple of big things. Pause. That. Hold on, I'm in the way of one of these. It's a Call of Duty weapon. I do not condone. I'm just making observations from a media standpoint. Principle. In total, nine men were convicted in 2018, including Richardson, who, still more than a year before the verdict, was running from police when he was on a temporary license from jail before he was finally caught. A lot of people don't know this, but if you have the YouTube app on your phone, you could be using it to make up to... Tang was part of a larger group that imported huge amounts of drugs estimated to be worth millions of pounds. In addition, they were responsible for the kidnapping of a drug dealer, Robert Allen, who was tortured for part of the unpaid debt. Surprisingly, his DNA was found on a gun from the hidden compartment that had been used in the attack, providing a vital clue for police to link the kidnapping to the gang around Richardson. Indeed, the gang had been flying under the radar of police for a long time, thanks to state-of-the-art surveillance equipment, trying to establish whether their network had been compromised by the authorities. Not surprisingly, the gang's main ballistics expert was a former military man, Martin Fitzsimmons, who had been... This is very intricate. <laughs> they had a ballistic expert for the gang. They had, you know what I'm saying, they had... Surveillance equipment to make sure they wouldn't get going under the radar. That's Trained in the use of this high technology while serving with the Special Forces soldiers. And his last name is not unknown in the underworld because it was indeed his innocent brother Ryan who was one of the victims assaulted in 2017 by the Lions team. But back to the gang around Richardson. It turns out that he is only the tip of the iceberg. In fact, the key players who supply the drugs are responsible for... Yes, I did, but you know, we'll put it again. Can you hear me? More than 100 million pounds annually by exporting cocaine directly from Brazil. At wait, the wait, head, wait, 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 the back. drugs are responsible for more than 100 million pounds annually by exporting cocaine directly from Brazil. At the head are the Gillespie twins, nicknamed the Brothers. They are wanted as part of a worldwide arms smuggling and drug trafficking investigation. Listed as most wanted in Scotland. Twins, huh? In the past, they were... E Every time I think about twins from the UK, it's like the Grey Twins. <laughs> Even linked to one of the largest the drug brothers. seizures by police in France in 2009. They eventually fled to South America from where they claimed to run an organized like Benidorm or something, don't it? Crime Empire. The Scottish operation went international, so there were more than 200 specialized police officers working on it to find these fugitives. Not to mention regular meetings of Scottish detectives with the How much money did the Scottish government put into this? Or, or, or how much money, period, was put in the, to, 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 to these, uh, to finding these, these uh, mafia type gangs over there in Europe? The FBI the and DEA Scotland. at the US Embassy in London. But the two brothers were not alone. Their core group consisted of other henchmen who would regularly do the dirty work. Jordan One Owen them, is behind Christopher. You was allegedly involved in the death of blogger Martin Koch in 2000. Hold on now. I'm not a blogger. I'm a vlog. 
Er, so okay. And six. I'm minding my business. Stein in the Netherlands. Indeed, the twins would have been linked to the MPC company, specialized in encrypted phones. And so, Christopher made an appointment with Martin to discuss a potential partnership to advertise encrypted phones on Martin's blog in exchange for a considerable amount of money. But it turns out that this lucrative deal was mainly aimed at using Christopher, aka Scotty, as a decoy. Indeed, on this video, we can see Martin Cog, accompanied by Christopher, when a gunman runs towards the two men, pointing his weapon at the crime blogger. But according to one of the hypotheses, the weapons seemed to refuse to work. Neither of them reacted to this initial assassination attempt. <laughs> they didn't even know what was going on. Two will go the same day to a sex club in Lauren, and it is here that Martin will be shot in a parking lot. A team around Ridwan Tahi was prosecuted for organizing this assassination, and Christopher himself was jailed for life for that. All wanted by European warrant, Christopher was captured in Italy with a false Latvian passport, James half naked in a hotel in Brazil. But the case of the twins becomes more complicated. The detectives fear that they have been kidnapped and executed in Brazil. It would be a fallout with the local gang in the city of Fortaleza. Moreover, even the closest people had not heard anything from them for a long time, and everyone thinks they are dead. But let's go back to the Scottish landscape where the number of drug-related deaths continues to rise. Every day in Scotland, three people die from a drug overdose, and those are shocking statistics. Each death is a tragedy, obviously, for that individual, but... Yes, absolutely. It's a tragedy. For their loved ones, their families, for the wider community, and, and for all of Scotland. And the drug war may yet explode, with the international crackdown on the Kinahans. Indeed, this will have an impact on Scottish associates. So yeah, drug free is the way to be, honestly. You know what I'm saying? If you're going through some deep rooted issues where you need to get away or do some type of go go to see a counselor. They're probably free. The counselor will set you up with a free one, right? Which is the lions who can no longer rely on a steady supply of quality product via the Dublin gang's connections. Indeed, the product that arrives in Scotland is already cut with other substances, which weakens its quality. This is noticed by consumers who turn to other suppliers at the expense of the lions. In addition, customers no longer want to pay their debts for such a bad quality. It is only a matter of time before the lid blows off. This was, honestly, this was well put together. <laughs> the mix, I ain't, maybe I haven't seen this in a while. This is very well put together. Till I leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells till I'm gone. Damn, I didn't even know my exit sentence. Let me start over, I'm gonna edit that out. Till I leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, I'm gone.